You know, a bike is a lot like a woman. They have handles to hold, two big round things, and are prone to breakdowns. But unlike a woman, a bike will never dump you by text message then run off with that douchebag Matt from accounting. We're just going for a ride through the countryside. Gonna get a road on his backside. Gonna be a tough ass, but here we up to the tires. We'll have to ride real fast. He's gonna get a sore ass. Leaving the town of Mulyinning, I have to travel on the rough corrugated gravel roads along where the old rabbit proof fence once stood. But they broke through the fence, and rabbits are still rife in this area, causing untold damage to crops. Although trapping and shooting hasn't helped to reduce numbers, some of the rabbits are starting to develop drinking problems and dying due to liver failure. Not only did the fence fail to keep rabbits out, it also let this monstrosity through. But after some mechanical trouble and a near fatal encounter with a rabid beast, I reached the letter N. N is for Narrabin. Actually, come to think of it, there's probably somewhere better up the road. N is also for Nyabing. Nyabing was founded by 1950s crooner Bing Crosby, whose body was laid to rest in the dying Bing mausoleum in the centre of town. But after a drunken rampage at the funeral by pro golfer Jack Nicholas, all golfers were banned from the town, leaving lawn bowls as the only sport allowed. Nyabing hit the news in 1826 as the first town to ban late night shopping, followed by a ban on daytime shopping. Outbreaks of disco fever occurred, as businesses had trouble staying alive. Travelling onwards, I realised that infectious diseases aren't the only danger in these parts. O is for Ongarup. The town's entry statement reflects Ongarup's reputation as the best place in the Great Southern to get castrated. Castration became commonplace in the 1990s due to the town's antiquated corporal punishment laws combined with a large number of men from local sporting clubs and community organisations who couldn't afford satellite porn channels, so they resorted to purving on nuns from the local convent. But the major destination for visitors in Ongarup isn't the pub or the wrecking yard, but the Yonganau Malifau Centre, where for an exorbitant fee, visitors can learn all about this native bird, as well as anything even vaguely related to it. There is even an opportunity to see some real live Malifau in the Malifau enclosure outside, or at least you're supposed to see them. Well, the Malifau are nowhere to be found. This is why they need to bring back the zoos of old, where it was just a cage with the animal sitting right in front of you. That way you knew what you were going to see. Of course, the centre also features the obligatory overpriced souvenirs for gullible idiots. So after an expensive toasted ham and cheese sandwich, I bid farewell to Ongarup and head north again. P is for Pingrup. Pingrup is a thriving community. It even has a caravan park. With the playing band and neighbouring Narbing, local golfers, also known as Trojan Ducks, now play exclusively at the Pingrup Golf Club, renowned for its narrow fairways and luscious greens, and home of the Pingrup PGA Masters. But the biggest sporting event in Pingrup is the annual Pingrup Races. Once a year, the locals flock to the Pingrup Racetrack, filling the 50,000 seat grandstand to see if their nag can be first past the winning post. This is followed by cricket training or a game of football. Visitors to Pingrup may enjoy looking at the old machinery, lovingly restored by the Gay Farmers Alliance. The GFA has also been responsible for brightening up the slums of Pingrup and introducing households to wind power. Other achievements are listed on the honour board, named after inaugural president Kent Road. The Gay Farmers Alliance meets formally on Tuesday evenings in the town hall and informally under the water tank in the early hours of Saturday morning for group bonding exercises. Unfortunately, I can't hang around until then. I must head west again. After scoring a free pen from the Nibing Inn, I travel through many small localities, visiting attractions such as the Quobrup Man, the Wheat Bin and Paul and Badgerbup, and then Yula Marup, the, um, the, uh, um, the locality sign. But after a quick game of giant craps, I reach my next destination. Q is for Quelia. The town of Quailiup is named after nearby Quailiup Lake. The lake area is home to one of the last known populations of an extremely endangered animal. 
These tracks here belong to the brown nosed wallaby. If we follow them further, we might just see where the little wallaby went. There he is there, sliding through the bushes. Look at its long matted fur. The brown nosed wallaby has been pushed to the brink of extinction due to its long reproductive cycle and delicious taste. As with most small town sites, the main features of Qualia are the wheat bin and old hall. Most halls have two storage tanks, one for water and one for sulfuric acid. Travellers in this area are advised to avoid strange hitchhikers, especially those that hang around bus stations. And so concludes another episode of Lofty Z to Z. Last week I brought you pictures of some of the highlights of some of the wildlife that I've seen. Tonight, I bring you some of the highlights of some of the not-so-wildlife. Do enjoy, and remember, never share your spaghetti with an Oompa Loompa.